this video, I want to give you an example demonstration of how the selection sort algorithm works. Then I'd like to show you an example implementation using Java. So the two things that we need to keep in mind when we're doing selection sort is the current position, so that's where we're currently at, and the current minimum of the remainder of the list that is unsorted. So we're going to start off with an example here. Let me grab my pen and say that this is our first element, so that's position one, and this is the unsorted portion of the list. So we're going to find the minimum value in this part of the list and swap it with this position. That will put the minimum value that exists in the entire list first. Then we're going to repeat that at position two to get the second smallest element in the list and then the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth, and then we have the whole thing sorted. So that is going to be our pattern. Let me demonstrate by going through it. All right, so we're at position one, that's 89, and our minimum value is 55. So we're going to ask ourselves, is 55 less than 21? No, it's not. It's greater. So our new minimum is now 21. So now is 21 less than 144? Yes, it is. So 21 remains our minimum. And is 21 less than 34? Yes. So therefore, our minimum stays at 21. But now we do our first swap. So our swap means that we're going to switch places with our current position and the minimum value. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so this position becomes 89 and 21 goes into the first position. All right, so now we begin a whole nother iteration. So now we're going to be at position two, and our unsorted portion of the list is going to start with 89. So uh, is 89 less than 144? Yes, it is. And is 89 less than 34? No, it is not. So 34 is our new minimum. And we are also at the end of the list. So 34 is going to swap places with 55, which is position 2. All right, so we're going to put 34 here and 55 at the end of the list. All right, now we're going to repeat with our third iteration. So we are at position 3 now, and that means our current minimum, our unsorted list, begins with 144. So we're going to ask, is 144 less than 55? No, it is not. It is greater than, and therefore we're at the end of the list again. So now 55 is going to go into position 3. So we're going to put 55 here and 89 at the end. We're done with that iteration, so we're going to go up to position 4. So at position 4, the unsorted part of the list is 89. Well, there's nothing else to compare 89 to, so 89 is the minimum. So we're going to go ahead and put 89 in position 4. So let's put 89 right here. And then that means we are swapping it with 144. Now 144 is the end of the list, and therefore everything is sorted. So that is a demonstration of how selection sort works. Now let's look at it in Java. So here we are over in Eclipse, and I have my selection sort class up in front of you here. And what we're going to try to do with the selection sort class is arrange these characters in alphabetical order. So basically, this class doesn't do a whole lot other than it instantiates itself. So it's going to run the constructor here. The constructor is going to convert this string of characters into a character array and assign it to this class variable called list. So that gives us something to work with. Then it's going to run the sort method. So it's going to go here to line 11, which we'll look at the details in a second, sort it, and then it's going to print it out. Very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and push play. And here you can see we've got the letters A through Z in order uh, in our console. So now let's take a look at the sorting method in debug mode. So to run debug mode, I'm going to click this little bug guy. And what it's going to do is it's going to arrange my panels or my windows here in Eclipse in an order that makes sense for debugging. 
So in my main window here, I've got my code. In the upper left, I've got my call stack. In my upper right here, I've got a watch list of my variables. And over here, I've got an outline of my program. So now let me walk you through the sort method. So the sort method has two variables. It's got a list size variable. And when I hover over it here in debug mode, you can see I've got uh, an assignment of 26. So basically, list size is 26 right now. And then I also have a min uh, variable that is uninitialized on 13, but since I'm paused on line 23 right now, it currently holds the value of 5, which is what my watch list up here says anyway. Then the algorithm really starts to uh, begin on line 15 with an outer loop. So I have a loop here and I have a loop here. This is called nesting, a loop within a loop. And the first one here is the outer loop. This one is the inner loop. So the outer loop is going to iterate my current position, which I'm calling start right here. And the inner loop's job is to go through the unsorted portion and find the minimum. So the inner loop found position 5 to be the smallest, and the outer loop maintains our position that needs to get swapped. So the third thing that happens down here is this little grouping is going to swap that current position with the minimum value, so which was the fifth position. So now if I look at the list before it does the swap, let me go ahead and, uh, where's my list? Right here. If I hover over it, you can see the first item in my list is Z, and then the fifth element is A. So that makes sense. So this is the element. It needs to go first. So that's what's going to happen next in this list. So temp is going to, let me go ahead and move one uh, line forward in execution. So I just hit the F5 key, by the way. Those keys are up here. So if I wanted to advance or step over or step return, that's F5, F6, F7. So now temp has been uh, given a value, and it's been given the value of Z. All right, so that is the first character, and I'm remembering that because I'm now going to take that first position, position 0, in my list, and overwrite it with my minimum value, which is in position 5. So if I look at list, position 5, so let me hover over this one more time, and go down, it's about to take the letter A and hold that. So I'm going to go ahead and advance another line. So now list at the start position, if I hover over it, it's no longer Z, it's A. And let me scroll down a little bit here. So I have A twice in the list. A is at 0 and A is at 5. That's why I needed the temp variable on line 23. Line 23 remembers the fact that Z was first. So now if I advance one more line, list starts with A. And if I go, go down to element 5, it is a Z now. So that is my swapping procedure right there. And then we need to go through this again. So now I'm back at my outer loop. I'm going to iterate again. So now my, my starting position is 1 and I'm going to enter into this inner loop. Now, I'm going to just kind of quickly go through a couple iterations here of the loop and watch execute. Okay, and let's see where we're at right now. Right now, my list minimum is 14. So my 14th value in the list, let me go ahead and hover over it. Let's go ahead and find 14. 14 is the letter B, so that makes a whole lot of sense. So let's go ahead and finish this out. And now when I get through the swap method, right now, uh, if I hover over list one more time, all right, the, fir the uh, first position in the array has taken B. 
And if I go all the way down to 14, there's B again. On the next line, it needs to take whatever temp was. So that was the letter D. All right, so that swap has occurred. So now in my console output, let's go ahead and just play the rest of the program. I'm going to remove this breakpoint and then keep playing. And then there is the rest of the alphabet. So this has been a brief demonstration of how the selection sort algorithm works. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email me or see me in class.